Hello, can you see me? Where are you? Spain? I'm in Spain, amigo, living the life. It's, it's uh, SpongeBob? Is he, is yeah, he, I'm here. He, what? <laughs> Where do you want? Where are you at? Where's my camera? Oh, that's Baxter right there. What's going on, man? What's up, yo? How you doing? Hi, everybody, and welcome to Like We Never Left. It is the show that brings back together your favorite New York sports teams and personalities. In honor of the 10-year anniversary of Johan Santana's legendary Mets no-hitter, we're going back in time with the man himself, Johan Santana. He joins us on the show, along with the man who caught the no-hitter, Josh Tolley, the former Mets pitching coach, Dan Worthen, and Mike Baxter, the local guy who made the no-hitter saving catch. Guys, great to see everybody. You know, Johan, I'll begin with you. Can you believe that it has been 10 years? It seems like it was yesterday, but when you think about it, and then um, the way my body feels, it's, uh, it has been 10 years for sure. What are the memories like? How fond are they? Uh, is it something you take with you every every day of your life? Oh, 100%. You know, every time you have opportunity to talk about what happened, people ask you, and then every time you see people, they, they go back to, to that day. But 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 uh, overall, you know, I always said this, you know, the way the way we celebrate that game in the middle of the season, you know, it's something that uh, has been, uh, it will be remembered forever. Josh, what, what was it like for you as that night was unfolding? Yeah, uh, stressful when it got down the stretch, that's for sure. But um, it was exciting. Again, there was uh, the, the focus level was not different than any other day, but especially in the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, the, the focus level definitely, definitely had to ramp up. And watching Johan's mentality shift, kind of as the game went on, I think was something that I always say that stood out in the no hitter to me. I'm not superstitious by any means, but you have a routine that you do, and then every time. Uh, I went back to to the bench. You can see that every everybody start moving, you know, away from me. You know, so you can see that something's going on, and then the atmosphere, the way everything uh, it was. But to me, I was like, nobody's gonna take this ball away from me. You know, I'm gonna finish it regardless of of, of what it is. I wasn't aware of pitch count at all, uh, and Dan can can talk about that. But to me, it was just an opportunity that I had that I was not gonna let go. Dan, Johan said he wasn't aware of the pitch count, but I know Terry Collins was aware of it, and I know you were aware of it. What was that like for you as the night went on and the pitch count continued to rise for Johan? Well, Terry was actually talking that night. He says, you know, we're going to get fired after this game, Dan, don't you? You know that's going to happen. I said, Terry, there's nothing you can do. He, he's not going to come out of the game. And I kept telling what Terry says. That's 132, that's 132, 134. But Terry, there's two unintentional walks in there. So that takes us down to 126. Uh, and so it was uh, 125 pitches is, you know, out of the realm now, but it, but it really shouldn't. You know, at that time, 120 pitches was the max for us. We went 334, three, three games. So you can go one, 110, 110, 110. Um, anyhow, he made through it. He did a great job, and he's right. That the, when he came in after like the after the sixth inning, everybody had a pretty good feeling of what's going on, and he would come in, and everybody else would shift down to the other side. And I wasn't going down near him either because I know who are you coming down here for, SpongeBob? Why are you here? Why are you here? I said, all right, all right, I'm gone, I'm gone. <laughs> and what about you, Mike, from out in left field? You can feel the building. Um, my Dan said, I think as you get deeper into those games, fifth, sixth inning, it starts to become real. And then I got out of there when it started getting hot. So I don't know, you know, totally and, and Johan, they, they had to get it done. Uh, I just hit the eject button and got myself out of it. So, uh, but you could feel it. There was one guy who was, you know, right in the middle of things. He was integral in, in how that night unfolded. He has a special message for you guys. Let's listen into that right now. Hi everybody, it's Terry Collins here. I just wanted to say, hi, I wish I could have been there uh, on the call with you guys. Certainly miss everybody on this call. Uh, fortunately, I got to see Josh last year at the fantasy camp, but Johan, this is a special day for you, a special anniversary for you. Uh, what you accomplished on June 1st, 10 years ago, uh, it, it was unbelievable. It was a tremendous experience for all of us involved. Uh, I beat up Dan the entire game, uh, asking him, you know, I, I, first time maybe in my career, I was hoping someone would get a hit in the eighth inning because I knew you were under a lot of stress going through, throwing all those pitches. But certainly it was a, it was a tremendous experience and 
Um, Mike Baxter, what a what a tremendous play. And Josh, you and I have talked about, you know, the job of what it was like to call a game for this, for this guy and have him execute pitch after pitch after pitch. But uh, again, it was uh, certainly an honor to be a part of it all. And certainly, certainly hope to I get a chance to see everybody here down the road. Johan, you heard what Terry had to say. What's your reaction to that? Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, uh, he he um, uh, he was a great manager and uh, and a great uh, friend and a great human being. We always talk. He always gave me the opportunity. He always listened to to, to all of us. You know, we always trying to find ways to, to win games and to help each other. And I had nothing but respect for, for, for Terry, because you know, he was uh, he was great, not just to me, but to the whole team. Let's go back as that night started. Uh, Josh, what was the bullpen session like? Did you sense, did you feel like Johan had stuff that was unhittable? No, Gary, actually it was the opposite. Um, oh. We weren't sure if we were going to get through the first inning, to be honest with you. Um, it, it wasn't. It wasn't sharp. It was resurgent for pitches. We're not sure what our secondary pitch is going to be. We're not sure how we're going to put guys away. It just didn't feel great coming out of the bullpen. I remember walking in and talking, of, let's just get strike one. Let's work off of that and see where we're at and start getting our pitches going as the game goes on. And next thing you know, it's the sixth inning and we haven't given up a hit yet. So what happens in the pregame bullpen session does not dictate what's going to happen in the game. I mean, I've seen it both ways. But um, in particular, that night, Johan was not um, was not specifically sharp. You know, Johan threw maybe 10% sliders in his entire career, but I thought he had a good slider in the bullpen. I said, all right, he's going to get by because he's got the slider and the changeup. Fastball was not coming out as cleanly as, as it generally does, uh, but he was, going, he was going to compete. Mike, you're a local guy, Whitestone, Queens. As it's unfolding, you know the history of the Mets. There had never been a no-hitter in, in the history of the franchise. Did, did that add to the excitement from where you were, you know, looking at the game from? Well, I think as it was going on, um, but there were a few walks. And, and I think, you know, you play so many games, that it, it felt fairly normal for the first four or five innings. And then, like Johan mentioned earlier, you start to see the guys move away from him and you recognize something's going on because um, he's sitting on the bench by himself when he's coming in. So as that game did get deeper, you knew. And then the history of the, the franchise does. Kind of hit you if you have the you know, the knowledge of it, and I did um, because I used to get tortured in high school for it, just because it was another thing that the Mets never had. Let's go back through some key moments in that game. Uh, beginning in the sixth inning, uh, Carlos Beltran hits one down the left field line, fair foul. You know the the replay wasn't then what it is now. As you look back on that, Johan, does it does it enter your mind at all? Do you think about that that moment? And what were you thinking out on the mound at that moment? No, not at all. You know, uh, it's just. Part of the game, you know, they're gonna call good, they're gonna make good calls, bad calls, whatever that that might be, and the umpires have a job to do. You know, uh, us as a player, you hope it's foul, and then to me, still was a foul. You know, we there's a lot of things in the in this game that you can control. You know, and, and and in fact, the only thing that you can control in this game, in this game, is yourself. You know, so that's what I was trying to do, trying. Uh, take, stay focused, composed, and then go back to 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 do my job. So in the seventh inning. Uh, Yadier Molina stings one to left field, and Mike, you made what was the no-hitter saving catch. Take us through that moment from the moment the ball came off the bat and how it played out for you. I think off the bat, I felt like it was a play that, that could be made. Um, you know, it was, I felt like it was going to be catchable, or at least stay in the park. Uh, you knew it wasn't going to get out, so you just go for it. And um, I think on on the route to it, um, it wasn't the cleanest route in the world. It kind of made a little adjustment at the end. And then really, as I was catching the ball, I just couldn't get my feet under me. And uh, I couldn't kind of brace for the fence and, and kind of tripped into it. And couldn't take the, um, couldn't hit it the way I needed to. So I, I kind of hit in an awkward spot. But I remember, uh, you know, just going for it and, and just feeling like a ball that needed to be caught more than anything. Um, no hitter or not, uh, you, you know, I think in those moments, you're not thinking necessarily about a no hitter trying to save it. It's just a play that needs to be made um, because the ball was catchable. So uh, I just did my best to go for it. When you hit the wall, how painful was it? Yeah, I knew I was hurt um, right away. I didn't know where, uh, I didn't know how. Um, I just, uh, it kind of, I knew I couldn't play anymore. Um, it was just having a hard time kind of catching my breath and um, just kind of moving around a lot. In the beginning, I thought the ball, he didn't catch the ball. You know, because that's, that's the reaction that you get. You don't know. But then that split of a second, then he, he comes out with, with uh, and he made it now, and you feel great. But at the same time, it, 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 you know, all those emotions are like, 
like this because you're happy and you, you you're happy that he made that catch, but at the same time, it feels bad because he got hurt. You know, it's uh, but uh, definitely at that point on, I was like, I gotta do it. We have to do this, you know, because uh, it meant something, but also. Uh, we have to do it for Mike too, because he uh, sacrificed himself making that play, cr cr uh, crashing into the wall, and then 100%. Um, uh, you know, he was a big part of what we accomplished. You know, we we've replayed that moment so many times. Are there stories that happen behind the scenes that nobody has ever really spoken about that we don't that we don't know about? I didn't even know a, a fan jump into the field you know, until I watched some videos and stuff. I didn't know, because uh, uh, the security, when, when we were done celebrating, he, he came to me and said, and he asked me if I knew that uh, some fan jumped into, ran into the field. And I was like, no, I had no clue. I don't even know. You know, I only see my teammates and that's about it, you know, but uh, when I went into into the locker room, every, everybody was waiting for me to, 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 to come in. You know, it was, it was great. It, it was, like I said, there were emotions, you know, because you don't do those kind of celebrations in the middle of the season. You know, this was not playoff. This is not the World Series. This is just a regular game that we were all able to accomplish something very special. The one thing that stands out is making sure that Gary Cedarstrom was a home plate umpire, making sure Gary Cedarstrom knew that I caught the ball clean, that it didn't hit the dirt. It was right at the end, and I just turned around to make sure he was calling him out. And I mean, I get goosebumps talking about it. Dan, your reaction at that very moment? I said, hey, nice catch, Josh. Well done. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, it's done. We're over it. 135 pitches. Josh and Johan had thrown a no-hitter. And Josh was like, uh, you know, high school. He done, I can still remember it. You know, him making the pick. And, See, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> you know, the whole melee, it was like, you know, went crazy on the mound and everybody's it was, yeah, jumping up and down. It was, uh, it was an exciting day. What about you, Mike? You were watching from the trainer's room? Yeah, an empty trainer's room. Everybody uh, abandoned me <laughs> to get out into the pile. <laughs> I always say there's one thing in my career was I was part of a no-hitter, the first one in Mets history, and nobody can take that away from you, no matter whether you could hit and then not hit or you could catch and not catch it. As From a personal standpoint, it's something that I find um, – rewarding to be part of a history of an organization like the New York Mets first and foremost and the guys the pitchers and catchers that have come through the organization is something that even stands out even more yeah Josh that's well said man I agree I, I think you know we you just look at this call we all had different types of careers um, and the, the the beauty of it is that along the, the way whether you know I played 12 years and a lot of them were in the minors some were in the big leagues but this is one of those moments that um, I get to reflect upon you know and maybe it is a, a defining part of my career and it's something I'm very proud of all the points you brought up earlier about being local and being a Met fan I mean it, it adds a, a layer to me that it just feels like fate uh, to some degree and to have a little piece of that history um, inside of this franchise it, it means a ton. Hey Dan as a pitching coach what level of satisfaction is there to have one of your pitchers do what Johan did? And it happens to somebody like him, Johan, um, that makes it even better because you know what kind of heart and soul he had all the time. That was a compliment, yo. Thank you, sir. All right. I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry, okay? I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but, 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 Johan, are, are, after all these years, are you still emotional about it? When you make something very special and you and you part of history, it's always it's always good. It's always emotional, you know, whether whether you cry or not, because we were able to do something re very special. And yet, just like these guys said, you know, that's something that nobody's gonna take away from from us. And then it doesn't matter how many more come from now on. Nobody's gonna take away the fact that we were the first ones. Josh, what about holding on to that baseball after the final out? How tightly did you hold it to make sure it didn't get away? I mean, I, I wrapped both hands around it, if you can just imagine. And then I got to the mound and I didn't know what to do with it. Everybody was going crazy. I mean, it was chaos in, in the dog pile. But um, I, I remember handing Johan the ball and it's like, that that's what it's about. I mean that that was that was the moment. After even after embracing the hug, it's chaotic. But when I had the opportunity to put the ball in Johan's glove and say freaking great job, that was like that's the moment in the game that I don't ever forget either. Johan, where is that baseball? It's in my house. It's uh, it's in my memorabilia. You know, it's something that uh, 
that I really take care, I'm proud of, and then uh, it will be uh, in my memorabilia, in my collection for, for forever. I wonder after all these years now, a decade, um, and, and knowing what happened afterward, that your career didn't go that much longer, as you look back on it, Johan, are there ever any thoughts? Do you think about, well, should I have gone that far? Is there anything that ever comes into your mind? This is what I have to say to you guys and for anybody, you know, the way I play the game, I don't regret anything, anything. As soon as I walk out of those two lines, I don't regret anything because I gave everything I have to help my team to win. Every time I took the mound, I try to do my best. And then uh, it's just it's just how I was, you know, people who play uh, and uh, and the teams that I play for, they know exactly how I play the game. You know, I gave everything I have and I always took the approach of give my team an opportunity to win a ball game. And that's what I did. Uh, my career, unfortunately, didn't go the way that a lot of people wanted to uh, or the way I wanted to. But I don't regret anything. Everything I did, I did to help my team to win. That's about it. We thank you guys. For Johan Santana, Dan Worthen, Mike Baxter, Josh Tolley, and Terry Collins, thanks for making us feel like we never left. <laughs>